All right, hey everybody. This is the Pythonic Accountant, and I'm back with another stock market video. And this one is by request from a comment on the previous stock video, um, asking if there was a way to compare two stocks uh, together. And so what I'm going to do is demonstrate how you can take, you know, one, you can use Y Finance to download multiple stock tickers. And then two, you can put them together into a Pandas data frame and then into an Altair chart to be able to view them similar to um, how you can view one stock. So uh, the previously, you would view uh, one stock with the stock price as the y-axis. But typically, the way that two stocks are compared to each other, it would be based off of a percentage increase or decrease from the price uh, at the beginning of the stock's uh, life cycle. And the reason why is because two stocks might have completely different prices that don't really give much comparison compared to each other. And so you want to look at that performance. So, you know, first, what I like to do is see if there is already something out there to uh, that you can use to compare prices. And sure enough, uh, there's tons of stuff out there. And Yahoo Finance has an easy free uh, chart that you can use. So this is kind of nice. And we can use this as kind of our target to try and match and see how it looks. So, um, but the way this one works is you pick your initial stock that you want to view. So Exxon Mobil. So let's actually go back and we'll remove uh, CVX. So Exxon Mobil. Now this is your standard, you know, uh, stock activity. So you've got the price as the y-axis and um, the uh, time as the x-axis, and we're looking at a five-year range. If you want to compare, you click Comparison, and we did CVX, Chevron Corp. And what that does is now it adds an extra line and it changes that y-axis from a dollar amount to this uh, percent. So pretty nice. So it's you know not really necessary to come up with our own visualization, but it's kind of fun to see what we can do in Python. So let's go ahead and walk you through what we've done. So we're using the YPython, Altair, and Pandas libraries. We download the data for five years because that's the period that we're going to do our analysis for, similar to the graph that we just looked at. And we're going to do our interval as one week. Uh, that way it, it looks a little bit smoother than if you do a one day interval for this long of a time period. Let's just check how many uh, records we have. And we have 281. That seems reasonable. Uh, so that means we have 281 weeks. Let's just look what it looks like. Um, and so this is a multi-index data frame. So you've got first part of the index is the ticker. And that's because we said we want it grouped by ticker. And what that that's nice is you can then create two separate data frames. So we're going to create the Exxon Mobil and the Chevron data frames. Now what we're doing is we're let's take a look at what it looks like at first. So now we've just got this piece of it. So we're going to add on a close variance column, which is going to basically just be the uh, close amount divided by the original starting close amount here, and then we're going to subtract one. Um, so we're going to do that for both Exxon and Chevron, and then we're going to combine them together, and then we'll see what this looks like. And so we've combined them together, we added the symbol, and let's actually look at uh, the same date here. So we're going to do df.loc, and we want 2015.03.30 through 2015.04.30. And nope, it didn't like that. So what did it not like that? Let's see. Unknown date string. Oh, I always do that. So let's do the correct date string. There we go. So now you can see you've got your Exxon and your Chevron. And the first variance is zero because there's no variance between the starting close and the starting close. But then as you get to the next close price, you can see this one went up and it's up by a little over 5% here. This one is up by 3.5%. So this close variance column is basically our percentage that we can use um, for our visualization. So now we're going to create a visualization using Altair. So we're going to create our price and our volume. So the price is going to be um, an Altair chart using the data frame. And we have to reset the index so that way the date becomes an actual date column. We're going to use a line. And then we're going to say our x-axis will be the date. The y-axis is that close variance column. And then we want to have a color assigned to the symbol. And then we want a tooltip pop up to make it easy to see uh, what we're looking at. And we probably need symbol in here as well. I'm not sure how this will look, but let me try it. And then 
we're going to do uh, properties, width, and height. Same thing for volume, uh, just a little bit less info. We're going to do date, uh, volume, and then color symbol just for fun, see what it looks like. And let's, um, let's take a look at this. So here we go. Cool. So we've got our two charts, um, uh, charted in one, and you've got your variance, which is starts at zero, and then it's going to go you know, up a little, down a little. And you can hover your mouse over, and it gives you the symbol, the date, open, close, high, low, and volume. And again, symbol, date, XOM. And let's say we wanted to actually add that percentage change. That's easy enough. Close, close, bar. And then now we can say, OK, close variance is you know negative 2% there. All right, this one is 26%. Uh, so cool. And um, if we take a look at the shape of these, it should look pretty familiar because uh, this is the target that we were looking at. And whoops, let's make that a little smaller so you can see them and make them so they're kind of the same width. And uh, oops, it's a little too much. And you get the idea. But yeah, it looks like we, we pretty much got it. So I think that's pretty cool. Again, not sure how that's useful unless there's you know information you're not able to find or if you you know want to view yours in a certain format that you're not able to get elsewhere. Um, and so, you know, here's just another example of how you can use Python to uh, do some cool stuff with stocks. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, if you liked it, please click like and uh, subscribe to the channel if you want to see more like it. And, um, you know, recording this during the midst of the coronavirus craziness. So if I uh, hope you are hunkered down and doing well and have lots of toilet paper, maybe I'll do a uh, video next on some kind of relationship between accounting and toilet paper. That seems like a good idea. All right. Talk to you later.